Okay, let's introduce a few uh, more advanced concepts here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a second step, a second approval step. So we're going to have two approval steps. Instead of sequencing them so that first then one improves it and then the second person approves it, let's have them both approve in parallel so that they both get notified at the same time. And then what we're going to want to do, so I'm adding a third step here, and I'm going to call this supervisor approves or rejects. And I'm also going to have this start when the parent stage starts. So, you know, this complete contract is still configured to start when manager approves or rejects. I've now got this one and this one starting when the stage uh, starts. So it's a little odd visually. That's something we will work on in the future. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reuse my approval request, but I am going to, for this username, I'm gonna assign it to a third user, Yuki Supervisor, gs0.org. Okay, so we've got our contract configuration, um, but we need to change it, don't we? Because we no longer want it to start when the manager approves. Now what we have to have is we have to wait until not only this one uh, re returns completely, but this one also has to return completely. And furthermore, uh, we want these both to be approvals. That's a little different. In the first one, we 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 didn't really check, but let's you know let's let's check this time. So the manager has to complete this step and has to return a value of approve, and the supervisor also has to do it and return a, a value of approved. And I'm going to make things a little clearer here. I am going to re sort of reorder this a bit. Um, and we'll call this uh, complete config if both approve. And let's go back, you know, let's go back here. If I try and save this, I'm going to get a weird error. So let's fill this in before we forget. Okay, now in our new step three, we still want to use the complete configuration flow. Uh, and, but we're only going to start this step if it is uh, an approval. So we know that we can just pass approve to this because if we don't have both of these approving it, we're not even gonna start this step. Um, and her comments, we'll come back to that. Uh, we'll come back to that in a bit. So here, meanwhile, I'm just gonna put the same record.id and this is gonna be assigned again to myself so that it comes back to me. So in order to, in order for the orchestration to have the smarts to know that it has to wait until both of these approve, I'm gonna use a custom entry flow. So I'm gonna look, this custom entry flow is going to uh, make the call. So what does it need? Well, it's gonna need to look, whenever it runs, it's gonna need to look at the output of this one and the output of this one. And only if both of them are returning an output of approve, uh, do we start this step. So we have to build that flow. So let, let's go build that flow. Start a new flow here. Now, unlike the step flows, which are designed to be run by individual workers, this entry flow, this entry flow, this is automation. It's going to get invoked programmatically and figure out what's going on. So I'm going to select an auto-launched flow for this. And I know that I need to pass two values into this flow. I need to pass 
what we'll call the uh, manager approve or reject value. And mark this is available for input so that I can map something into it. And let's do a supervisor. Approve or reject. And so if you watch the second tutorial, um, you will recall seeing this slide. So if I want to use this, this flow as an entry flow to determine whether or not to enter the third step, I'm going to need this output variable, is orchestration condition met? So let's create that now. All right, so I have my entry flow actually has a pretty simple job here. I have to determine whether both of these values are being passed in with the value approve. And if they are, then I set this to true. And if they aren't, I set it to false. And I can do that. Now that I've got my, my variable set up, let's call this, uh, it's quite easy to do. Let's call this have both approvers approved. And let's call this one, yes. And so the conditions here are... Manager approver reject has to be returning approve and supervisor approver reject has to be returning approve. And if that's not the case, then it is not true that both approvers have approved. So if they both approved, then what we want to do, let's call this a mark uh, this step as ready to start. And all we need to do here is take is orchestration condition met and set this equal to true. And, and let's set it equal to false. All right, so we'll call this uh, entry flow. Have both approvals been received? And activate that. And so now let's go back here. Let me reload this in order to pick up that new option up here to custom. So the start, you know, when we start it, we're going to be entry flow, have both approvals been received. And we will pass into this entry flow the outputs from the manager's approval step and the supervisor's approval step. So we go down here and we say the manager is going to output from that flow. You'll remember we set this up to contain whether they clicked on approve or reject. And likewise, we're going to do that for the supervisor. So that will pass the value in. And now let's uh, test it out. Let's activate this latest version. And let's go and create a new contract. So I'm going to expect to get notifications in the email boxes of both Jalen Manager and Yuki Supervisor. So let's see. Here we've got Jalen Manager. And there is the brand new uh, notification from Jalen. We can go and visit contract 121 and visit and see his work that's waiting for him there. And then likewise, let's go and look in on Yuki Supervisor's inbox. And, and that's right here. 
And so Yuki supervisor can also go. Okay, so they both have identical approve and rejects because we're doing this in parallel. And then, so we'll have this over here. We have this over here to see if we can fit, uh, fit anything else. So we got Yuki there. Now here is my own email account. So what we're expecting is that it will take both of them completing their step in order for me to get notified of that third step in the stage. Just to, re just to review, these step and this step have to be done. And then this, each time one of those completion events comes back to orchestrator it's going to check it's going to run this entry flow pass these values in wait for the result and the entry flow will tell it is it time to start this final step all right so here we'll go to 121 we'll prove it And let's do what we have done previously and take a look so we can kind of track um, how things are going. All right, so that was, uh, that was Jalen, right? No, that was Yuki. Okay, so Yuki has done it. So when we refresh this, we expect to see just the supervisor step change, uh, and it has. So it's complete, but the third step hasn't started yet. So let's see if we can make that uh, happen by going over here. And the next day, uh, Jalen Manager comes in. And if we go back here now, here. So now what we expect to see when I refresh this is that this first step will be completed and this third step will have actually started. And that's exactly what happened. So we go back here to Adam's inbox. So uh, I, we come here to the contract. It says there's no more work. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. I thought that Adam user had this assigned, uh, but remember, but I'm playing around with different IDs. Uh, so we have to be careful with that. Um, keep that in mind when you're debugging this stuff. Uh, uh, you can see that I'm having to bounce between browsers. There's Adam user. And now click on this. And here's the complete configuration, that third step. Uh, now, by the way, uh, I didn't actually hook up the comments or uh, actions to this third flow. So it's just got these hard-coded static values in there. Uh, you could do something there uh, to hook those up and, and make it much more useful. But um, that's, what, that's one way we could handle this. And now, remember, we had a decision element here that basically said if this is approved, then go down this path and bring in another screen. And so I can continue my work. And now the whole uh, story should be completed. So uh, when we refresh here, not only do I expect to see that the third step is completed, I expect to see that the stage instance is completed. And here, the instance itself. So the inst you know, this is the overall run of this orchestration. This is great. And we go down here, everything's complete, 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 complete. So we're in good shape. So that, you know, to, to summarize the big learning of this is that entry flows uh, and exit flows give you tremendous power to customize the experience. Uh, they also give you power to achieve some things that you can't do yet in the pilot through um, through easier methods that we do intend to add. I haven't really shown exit flows, but down here, process behavior, right here, same idea. Uh, this is 
This flow will, as you might remember from tutorial two, this flow will execute every time the orchestrator does an evaluation. Every time basically it wakes up, it's kicked by some event. Hey, wake up and see if anything needs updating. Every step that's in progress uh, will be evaluated. So if you want, you have uh, the ability to control uh, very granularly whether or not a given step is done or not uh, by using one of these uh, step processing flows is how we have it labeled here. Uh, as I mentioned before, calling it exit determination flow doesn't really work because there's a lot of things you might want to do uh, each time through that aren't about exiting, uh, but you've got the basic idea. So um, that's it for tutorial number three.